Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Nidecker Alpha. This board features Nidecker's Surfy Cam Rocker, which is a rocker in the tip and the tail, camber underfoot. It is slightly set back, so you do get more rocker out in the nose. This is gonna give you ease of entry in and out of turns, as well as more optimal powder float. And then that camber underfoot is gonna give you the snap, pop, and drive. This board is available in 153 and 158. I rode this board at Copper Mountain on a gray bird day. There was a low to moderate visibility. You had low to moderate winds. You had some fresh pow, chunder pow, heavy pow, kind of after the storm conditions. And I rode it with my Rome Black Label bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. So this board does have a directional free ride flex. And with that, you get a little more flex in the nose where the rocker is. It stiffens up outside the front foot, stays consistent back to the tail and gets just a hair stiffer back there. There's a little bit of torsional flex, but not a lot. This board is very rigid. I would say that it's definitely past middle of the road free ride flex, but it hasn't gone into full plank spectrum. Now, the nice thing about the stability of this board is that with it being more rigid, it plows through chop and chunder with ease. You never really have to worry about it. It'll push through everything in front of it. You do get a little bit of chatter in the nose, but that's completely gone by the time it hits that front insert pack. So you never get any real leg fatigue. With that camber section through the middle, you have to load it up. And what it does is it engages that rocker in the tail and creates a springboard effect but only at fast speeds. If you're going really slow, this thing feels like a slug. It doesn't want to engage. It's when you're going faster and putting more into it that this board will actually pop. This board is a chewer to butter. Even with that rocker in the nose and the tail, that flex point right where the camber meets it, you put so much effort into it to get it to engage that you're better off just not even trying. Seriously, it's very rigid right there. You're putting so much effort into it and you get such a minimal press out of it. The edge to edge transmission is fluid off the front foot, but it starts to get hooky at slower speeds when you're engaging it off the back foot. You just notice that you need to go faster to really drive this board to push that camber and apex that carve. This is a board that you have to finesse the turns with it. There's not a lot of torsional flex so that ankle steering isn't as aggressive, so you're throwing your body more into it to get it to drive. Can it rail a turn? Yes. Are there limitations? Definitely. Are you gonna be able to lay it over and not worry about it getting kicked out? If you know what you're doing? Yeah. If you don't, well, I guess you better learn and you better go faster than you think. This is not a board for someone that's just gonna go cruise the blues at a medium to slow speed. The big thing to know is you drive it from inside that back foot and as you roll back on the tail, that's where it's gonna get its power for the turn. It's one of those boards that you really have to understand the nuances to get it to engage the way you want it to. Who's this board for? The free ride guy that wants power in their board, but can be a little bit laid back at times. Not all the time, but a little bit. So I don't know what it is with these new Nideckers. They're, I'm not impressed. I mean, it's nice that I can plow through chop and chunder with ease, but there's next to no torsional flex. I'm really just working harder than I should to get this board to turn the way I want it to. It takes more effort than I personally want to put into it. I get that there's riders out there that are going to absolutely love this, but for me, I'm just like, this, this is unimpressive for what it actually is. Sure, it's nice that I don't really have to worry about uneven terrain, but at the end of the day, I'd like a little more play between the feet just makes ankle steering a little bit better. Comparable boards, the Nitro Slash, the Ride Smokescreen, the Capita Navigator. Binding recommendations, the Nidecker Cone Plus, the Ride C9, the Rome DOD. This has been my review of the Nidecker Alpha. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you gonna buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications, that way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you want to support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Averin Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video.